Hey guys, Alan Bishop here from the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute. Uh, so you might like this little still you see here in front of you. This is what we've been talking about, the uh, the little collaboration still that I've been working on with Jason Wade Harrell, 13 Stills. This is a collaboration between the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute and 13 Stills. This is called the Black Forest Model Still. So I was thinking several weeks ago, you know, a lot of people out there buying a small copper still, spend a pretty good little amount of money on a copper still, whether it's a five or a 10 gallon or whatever. They, they get one, they see that they're interested in the art, and then they want to get into all these upgrades, right? And all those upgrades cost a little money. Well, I got thinking that it would make a lot of sense if you had a little five-gallon still that was kind of in the advanced beginner stage, where if somebody that was brand new to this could use it as a pot still, learn the fundamentals of pot still distillation, and then expand their art and their hobby by having a couple of different options. Maybe they're interested in gin baskets, botanical extraction, you know, even maybe essential oil production, um, maybe they're interested in making absinthe or gins or aquavit, things of that nature, uh, infusing through vapor with dried fruit as opposed to using a, a thumper where you have liquid and a little vapor. Uh, you know, just something that had a little bit more versatility to it, but also something that would work out well for advanced distillers. Because you guys that have been in this game for a while know this. You know, you may have a, a 40, 50 gallon still, maybe it's just a 20, whatever, but you don't always want to spend every you know, Saturday, Sunday, whatever day of the week that you run, uh, you know, eight, 10 hours in front of the still running that thing off when you could have a little small still and make something real special, real bespoke, not have to drag out a whole ton of equipment out of storage, wherever you got it at, unless you got somewhere that's already set up at and it stays set up there. And it's nice to have a small still to do these experimental runs on, right? Especially if you're here watching my channel, because, you know, I kind of have my own methodology that I've come up with over the years between historic Southern Indiana distilling methodology and the things that I have uh, modified, tweaked, or kind of created myself over the years. So we get into a lot of that here on the One Piece of Time Distilling Institute channel, obviously. And you guys might have noticed that we recently started offering uh, some fermentation packages for five-gallon fermentations, right? Where you can play around with some alternative grains and some things like that. Maybe even some higher cost stuff that you wouldn't ordinarily get a hold of. Some rare stuff that you may not have a whole lot of or be able to get a whole lot of. Fermenting in a five gallon bucket or two five gallon buckets. By the time you add your, you know, your one pound of uh, grain per gallon and you have all that offset, you know, two ten gallon buckets, be able to fill up this five gallon still here. Unless you're running brandy, of course, and you're running off of juice, then one five gallon bucket, you can fill it up. Pretty small, pretty easy to store, pretty compact, easy to move around. You know, same thing with the still as it is with a five-gallon bucket. Not not a, not a ton of stuff to have to store away somewhere or hide away somewhere. And that was important to me. Now, that's not to say that this still can't be uh, made into a larger still and scaled up. It can be, and Jason and I have certainly talked about that. So I went to Jason with a list of things that I'd like to see on a, on a smaller still, um, specifically for my style of distillation, specifically for what I'm doing at the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute channel to teach people. And amongst the things that I wanted was a built-in gin basket that came standard with the still, and I wanted it oversized. I wanted the option to have at least a couple of different line arms uh, or uh, options to switch out the type of line arm that you have as far as the angle. You know, I wanted at least a 90 degree over neutral, and I wanted a 45 degree. I wanted a little bit of reflux on that still. And Jason and I talked about the options, and I let him take what I came up with and make it into an actual practical thing that he could build. For what I believe to be a completely fair price for this little unit. The workmanship is fantastic. Jason's doing great stuff. And so we're just going to talk about some of the features on this still. Now before we talk about it, you can get this thing at 13 stills. Uh, you can go directly to Jason and buy it. We will have a third party affiliate uh, on the alchemistcabinet.com uh, warehouse, which is our store, where you can order this still, the Black Forest Edition 13 stills still, uh, directly through our store. And it goes to 13 stills and you buy that way. Uh, this still is going to be based a lot on my preferences, things that I like to do with distillation, methods that I've come up with over the years, and again, things you're going to see on this channel. And we'll be able to experiment together with those little fermentation uh, packs that we sold recently and other things on this channel, including absinthe, etc. So just to kind of walk you through the features here. So obviously, all copper construction, great workmanship. Jason's done a fantastic job. Got a little thermometer up here on the cape. I don't typically uh, pay much att attention to thermometers on the cape and the liquid. I know that some people do. Typically, I'll run a thermometer up here on the head just to see how close I am to running. But I'm comfortable enough with this still that I don't think it'll be a problem. And I think most people that are going to run this still, they're going to get comfortable with it pretty quick. 
Now there's a few things that are going to be different on the next model we'll talk about momentarily. Uh, but we're going to come up here to this head and you may have noticed that this head is kind of a, an odd size for this still and maybe even an odd shape as well. Well there's a reason for that. So I'm going to take this head off and I'll show you. But what we've done is we had Jason build this head as a built-in gin basket. And not just a gin basket, but a very oversized gin basket. Uh, kind of a weapon of mass extraction, if you will. So on my model, this is the prototype. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same as what you guys get because we, Jason and I have already talked about some things that we can change. On my model, this triclove on the front is where you're going to load your, your botanicals into. Um, if you look inside the still head, you'll see that there's a perforated plate in there to hold those botanicals up with several holes in it. Uh, I am going to talk to Jason. The next round of these he does, I'm going to have him make those holes a little bit smaller. So you don't have to worry about botanicals falling through. But always, 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 and there's no reason not to, even with a good tight screen, put your botanicals in some cheesecloth and double wrap it before you put it in a gin basket. It ain't going to hurt anything. Um, the next models will have a, I believe, a triclove, a stainless triclove with a, a standard thread up here on the top, uh, more or less, because what happens is with the, the large line arm that you're going to see momentarily, the long line arm, uh, if you're running water in the condenser, it's going to put a lot of weight on this and a lot of stress and start pulling on this and maybe warp the copper. With Jason's work, I don't think that you're going to have to ever worry about this, uh, this copper piece pulling out or anything like that. But it does need some reinforcement. Mine I'll have to run with a little brace to hold the arm up, but I'm not worried about that. That ain't no big deal. Uh, the other thing that you'll be able to buy that is one upgrade to this particular still, uh, when, those, when the new model comes out, this will still be here, but you'll be able to pay Jason for a sight glass that will go on there. And trust me, guys, with reflux, you're going to want a sight glass because you're going to want to be able to see how much reflux you are or are not getting through that sight glass while you're running this still. So... One of the other things that we made sure they did, and <coughs> Jason's good about this on all of his stills, we do have pressure relief valve. It's a two-way, so it's vacuum as well. You don't have to worry about vacuuming the still. You don't have to worry about blowing the still up. If you were to get a blockage for any reason, you shouldn't get any blockage whatsoever. Good heavy-duty copper for what it is, especially this size still. Let's slap this head back up on here. Turn the still a little bit that way towards the camera. So this gin basket is uh, massively oversized for this size still, and we did that for a reason. We did that for people that want to make essential oil for one, and for two people that really want to get into botanical distillation. And when I say really want to get into it, you're going to go all in on absinthe, aquavit, maybe extracting florals, etc. This is not this is not for absinthe and gin like you see on tv on a certain tv show this is for people who are legitimate about making real spirits that are really heavily vapor infused it's not it's not a it's not a play toy all right so the next thing that we did is we we wanted to offer a couple of different options as far as the line arm goes and one of the things that we did is we put a 45 on this thing now i'm going to go ahead and screw this on there but i'm not going to i'm not going to put the main line arm actually screw it on um because again it is going to be pretty heavy but i'll show you how to look if we can catch it all on camera so we'll talk about the line arm here real quick <clears throat> so we wanted a versatile line arm and the versatility that we wanted was to have two different uh, ways that you could run that line arm either as a 90 straight over or as a 45 so if you're running in a pot still mode you can play around with how that line arm might affect your natural reflux um, you can so one of the things that we wanted to do was to offer uh, a couple different angles on the line arm. Here's the 45, of course, uh, and then the line arm itself is pretty unique. So we built in some really cool options here. You can run this as I, off of either that 45 and throw this union on there, all right? And what you got is basically 45 up, 45 back down, okay? Or you can take this union piece off of here and go straight up with it and have a straight over I'll show you that in a moment but one of the things I wanted to talk to you about first was we actually put a cold finger on here so this is kind of like this is a little reflux mechanism a short little reflux mechanism so if you ever look at Scottish stills a lot of times in Scotland they'll talk about the importance of the angle of their line arm well if you ever look at some of the uh, distilleries that tend to run a 45 degree up <coughs> that are responsible for making 
a more fruity or floral style scotch whiskey, you may notice that right on the beginning of the line arm or a little up the line arm, there's a piece of, uh, of that line arm that's a little bit bulkier than the rest of it. That's cold finger. It's a jacket going around the actual line arm with a little water trickling through it to cause force a little bit of reflux. Not a lot. It's not like running a deflamator. Although I suspect you could hit this pretty hard with water and run it like a deflamator if you wanted to. We're going to find out. I don't know what kind of proof you're going to get off of this on a single pass. I didn't design it to be a single pass still. Although I think you could do some cool single pass stuff with it. This is for double pot still distillation mostly. All right, but we're going to play around with all those concepts. So this is really cool because you don't have to buy a separate piece of equipment to get that reflux on here. We also made it into a Lebeg condenser as opposed to a worm. And the reason we did that is I figured most of you guys have worms, all right? If you don't have worms, the thing about a Lebeg is, especially if you're new to this, a shell and tube like this, it makes you slow down. It makes you pay attention to what you're doing. You can't get in a hurry with one of these condensers. You're going to make better liquor because you're not in a hurry because you're using one of these condensers. As well, if you are making botanical spirits, it is my opinion, as well as higher proof spirits, let's say at 160 or 170, so you did a stripping run here, you got your you got your low lines at 60 or 70 proof, you're not putting them back in the still, you're going to run them again, run a little reflux and try to hit 160 or 170, you're going to make better liquor, in my opinion, with a Liebeg condenser as opposed to a worm. A worm holds on to a lot more of the SO2H2S compounds than a Liebeg tends to do. Uh, it has its place 100%. I have a lot of worms or serpentines as it is, and there will be upgrade options for this still that have those as well. Uh, but this is specifically for some of these Black Forest styles that we're talking about that we're going to be demonstrating on this channel. So if you don't have that 45 on there, you can, of course, just run it as is. And like I said, the next uh, the next set of these is actually going to have a, uh, a stainless triclove up top as opposed to uh, just a copper uh, copper top to the to the head. So that stainless will help reinforce everything and keep it from putting so much pressure on this copper plating up here. But when I run the 45 on this thing, I'm definitely going to be bracing that arm to some degree uh, because it does get a little unwieldy. And I didn't put it on there with the 45 just now because I don't have anything to still. And it would cause the still to uh, to obviously tip over if I wasn't holding on to it, etc. See if I can move the phone here so you can see a little better. So, overall, this is exactly what I was after. I wanted a versatile system that was compact. You put it away easily, get it out easily. Only run five gallons at a time if you want to. If you're doing stripping runs, you're going to run three five-gallon buckets of wash or mash. Well, wash, you're not going to run solids in here because you can't. Uh, but you're going to run three five-gallon buckets of solid or of wash in there. I'll get it out in a minute, guys. Of wash in there, strip that off, refill this with your low ones, distill it again. You don't even have to run the reflux. There's no reason that you have to. You can run this as straight-up pot still if you want to. you got a live bed condenser you can play around with. We're probably going to have to put just a little bit of a downward arc on uh, this when we run it in a 90. But I don't see that being a big deal at all, in all honesty. It's something we can change. Um, and I'll probably, honestly, for my my use and what's on the channel it'll probably almost always be 45 uh, because we're not going to real high proofs we just want a little reflux etc and we want to leave some flavor behind so apparently i do want to say jason can make these i believe in just pretty much any size you want he is also i think going to be able to offer these heads separately as a as an upgrade to whatever existing skill that you have uh, the other thing that we are going to offer is there is an upgrade where you can get a thumper and a worm for this still but as an all-in-one unit, just ready to go, this is exactly what I was looking for. It's something I've been looking for for years. And it's got a good, fair price on it, in my opinion. The price, uh, last time I talked to Jason, he said these are going to be 550 base units, right? So you go buy a cheap still, and you buy all the upgrades with it, you're going to spend more than $550 between that cheap still and a gin basket with a way to actually load it and some reflux and the Lebeg condenser as opposed to a worm. I think this is a good, uh, a good starting point for a lot of people and I think it's a good point for a lot of advanced distillers to relax and actually enjoy a weekend of distilling for a few hours as opposed to a few days. So y'all let me know what you think in the comments, but I'm looking forward to getting these out there. Like I said, these will be available through a third party affiliate uh, link on our store at thealchemistcabinet.com. It's the warehouse, that's our store name on there. Uh, that order goes directly to Jason Wade Harrell. 
I'm not making any money off of this. I literally, what I did is I set it up with Jason. I said, here's the kind of still I'd like to have for the channel. Here's what I think should be on that still for the channel. Can you do it? And he did it. There's some things we're going to change on it over time. But I think you guys will be incredibly pleased with the ones that he's making. And uh, we're going to get into some really cool stuff with this. And it's stuff that we can do together as a, as a group, uh, etc. So, guys, check out the Black Forest still. Get with 13 skills. Get you one. If you know somebody that's new to this uh, to this line of, uh, of uh, hobby, hey, this would make a great Christmas present right here. Uh, if you know somebody that's been doing it for a long time and they're a little more advanced, again, this would make a great Christmas present right here. You don't even have to be interested in making liquor. If you want to make essential oils, listen, she's set up and ready to roll with it. So, all right, y'all. Love you. Later.